Okay, welcome once again for the first time to our first ever live recording of Circulus, episode 22. The title of this episode is Beetle You To It. Because I'm a horrible person who enjoys puns immensely, but I repeat myself. And with me today is a wonderful band of adventurers. Uh, Akari is not with us today. He is apparently partying in Glasgow, so we wish him the best. But we do have some awesome people with us, including Jen. Jen, who will you play today? I am playing Meepo Chipclaw, a kobold sorcerer. And where can we find you online? My website is called Book of Jen. That's bookofjen.net. And it has a podcast, another one I've been meaning to start and haven't been able to, and a bunch of mostly gaming blogs and other stuff. Awesome. And we also have Tom. Tom, who are you playing? I'm playing Punk Arm Darkstone, the Gnome Barbarian. We also have Eric. Eric, who are you playing? I am playing oh I'm playing Obey Metalcaster. Uh, I am a um, dwarf cleric, and you can catch me at votekick.com. And I totally skipped this, Tom. Where can we find you? Uh, you can find me on Twitter at Bolthra, that's B-O-L-T-H-R-A, and website for my writing and all the other kinds of stuff coming someday soon. Awesome. I'll make sure to add that to your avatar um, when I have the information. We also have Logan. Logan, who are you playing? Uh, if I'm saying this right, I'm playing Phoenix Generos. You, you've cut out there. And I am you, you are unfortunately coming and going we're, we're hearing some of what you're saying but not all of it but logan we, we we got we got the heart of it you're playing phoenix and we know that you are no i i i can't hear you, you you sometimes as well yeah some something's going on with your connection unfortunately yeah um and last but certainly not least especially when it comes to arcane checks where i probably should not even have him roll for anything we have ari slash Matt. Um, I just spoiled it there. But Matt, who are you playing? I am playing Aristobulus Ravenscroft, Human Wizard. Okay. Well, let's get started. Uh, to rehash a bit, um, you had a wonderful trek through salt mines that were flooded, um, explored through an underground mining town, solved a mystery a murder mystery um and ended up having an epic top of a train battle with an eldritch horror slash vampire which means a good time was had by all except for everyone who had to make a death save or had two natural ones on dexterity checks to stay on top of the train not that that happened but that happened Sorry, Vex. But never mind about that. <clears throat> the battle ended. You were able to see a kraken smushing the town of Oregano Flat. Everyone who hates pun names rejoiced. And you were able to enjoy the rest of the train ride because that was really the beginning of the ride, so you had the rest of it to go. Uh, at this point, you've all had a long rest, so you can go ahead and mark that off in your character sheets. Uh, those of you who use spells, have them back. You're good to go. Um, you arrive safely back at the station in the basement of Ed's workshop. Uh, I'm not saying his full name. I should probably say his full name. Because um, I don't say it often. Edmund Steam Whistles, Fantabulous Multilevel Transtabulatory Service is the name of his business. Um, so you arrive back at the station. Easy um, for you to say. <laughs> 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 um, this time you don't have a giant metal keg filled with gear grinder special to load, so it's a lot Dang of it. to out. I, well, that you were delivering it to him anyway. It's still there, but it was Ed's to begin with. No, but I want it from a wagon. <laughs> um, a well, wagon. You may you may find some wagons in the near future. Just saying. Okay, so you. You all arrive safely, you unload. Um, Vex is beat. He slept more than most of you. 
um, on the ride, Shepard was beat too. Shepard had to, to make a death save during the, the climactic battle, so um, he, he got healed, but um, he's had better days, and he sort of forgot that he wasn't a puppy anymore, so he crawled on top of Vex to take a nap, and all you could see was Vex's feet sticking out of one end, and it was adorable. Um, but Ve Vex is really not in a good mood right now. He's not talking to anyone, and you're pretty sure that if you try to start a conversation with him, he might shoot an arrow at you, even though you're his friend at this point. He hasn't seen many trees. I don't know why some people are so cranky like that. I know. It's weird, right? I mean, Ponk is just full of joviality. Mr. Sunshine and Warmth. I just know. Like Don, he's kind of like the Don Rickles version of uh, uh, this world. <laughs> okay, so you you all clamor into um, Ed's elevator to go up to the the ground floor, um, which is just large enough to fit his elevator. And as soon as you go up, um, you are not in his workshop. There are no walls for his workshop. Okay. There's, there's no there a town. workshop? There's no workshop. Well, his basement is intact. But everything on the ground floor looks very similar to the background image for the stream. So are we in Minecraft now? <laughs> um, Idaho, the town of Idaho, has been burned to the ground. Oh, that strikes me as bad. <laughs> <laughs> They had it coming. Probably. No, Vex it, would be so happy. He would be, yeah. <laughs> like, he's, he would be thrilled with this. Someone beat you to it, yes. Um, now, if you look over a ways towards the main roads that go through Idaho, you do see a significant number of wagons that are parked. Um, apparently, more than one merchant caravan has stopped here. And there are people milling around, and you hear the sounds of commerce and people yelling at each other and stuff. But there are no buildings at this point. And there is a very thick smell of smoke from all kinds of things in the air. Why do I, why do I feel a gear grinder special was involved? You don't see any craters. No craters, okay. Gear grinder special better be involved. No, no, if, the, if it was involved, Ed's workshop would be gone, because that's where it all was kept. And at least some part of it survived. And, and your train ride would have ended in a much different way with no track. Yeah, that would be bad. Which is pretty much what Ed is saying, because <laughs> he spent a lot of time and effort building this train run between two towns, and having one of them wiped out is bad. They're both wiped out now. <laughs> So his life's work is on hold. Still, yeah, well, at least it's the tracks are still here. The train is still here. Yeah, but they're not connecting anything anymore. Uh, so so he, he starts muttering under his breath. He pulls out a notepad. He starts jotting things down because he's got to do some damage control. And he, he wanders off. Uh, Vex likewise wanders off uh, with Shepard because north of this town is a forest. And, and he just sort of makes a beeline towards there. You uh, need some time to do the trees. Yes, but what would the rest of you like to do? Maybe ask the people what happened to their town. Yeah, let's go find... We heard people talking. Let's go ask the those. What the, what Did they see anything? Okay. I suppose Ponk will wander along. So. He doesn't really care what happened to their town. So... <laughs> Okay, so well, admittedly, I'm curious. It was here when we left. I mean, does anybody remember where we parked? <laughs> I think yes, we're in the were. itchy lot. <laughs> you you remember where you left the horses? <laughs> yes. in the oh no! <laughs> exactly. You you can still find the stone foundations of said stable, but there are no horses there that belong to you. I'm surprised there's Pete. Well, there's no. There's only caravans have shown up. So there were, are, were there any survivors? Um, that is Let's, a very good question. Do we want to start looking for any survivors or just to talk to the caravan folks? 
See if maybe they saw something from afar. Maybe start there. They might know if there were survivors. Okay, that's good enough for me. So, what, let's what go kind find of person the caravan. Up to ask, are 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 you, <coughs> are you just gonna go and stop the first person you see, or are you looking for a type of person that you're going to talk to? Um, I let's start with the first person we can see. Honestly. Yeah. Okay, the first person you can see is a guard who is leaning against a wagon because there's really nothing else in this area to lean against. Um, I'm going to ask you to move along. What happened here? We parked a wagon here. I see that, but what happened to the rest of the town? I don't know. My job's to guard the wagon. And a fine Ooh. job you're doing, sir. Who is no the fine owner job. of said wagon? He points over at someone who's haggling with somebody else. Okay. Uh, then I, Ari will at least move towards the hagglers, waiting for them to perhaps finish. Okay. Yeah. Um, one of them walks off. The other one turns back to look at the wares for a wagon that was next to the wagon the guard was leaning against. Uh, he is dressed in definite finery. He, he is not dressed to travel. And his clothing looks like he has been traveling. Uh, so there's, there's mud splatters and stuff on it, but lots of finery. There, there's a cape over his cloak, over his cape. You know, Perhaps wearing a bit too much finery. He's got a very large hat with gold thread in it that's sort of flopping over to one side with a feather sticking out of it. Um, incredibly thin from the face, but if you're looking at him from behind, you can't tell because of the clothing adding extra layers. And he sees you coming and says, yes, may I help you? We cool. were... Good. I'm going to say hi, Mr. Mooney. <laughs> I don't know who that is. We were traveling uh, upon... Uh, never mind. What happened here? Where's I the town? Where, yeah. Did you see anything? I saw some smoke and some foundations. Is there anybody who was here earlier? Well, yes, but they've moved on by now. They didn't know what happened either. <laughs> <laughs> Alrighty then. All right, your, your yeah. font of information. <laughs> May I interest you in some cookware? Perhaps another time. Some wonderful gems? Some amulets? Some wagons? Oh, no, no, unfortunately, we don't have any spare wagons. We have plenty of wonderful things in the wagons, however. Some fine wines, some nice clothing, something for the little lady here. So you're trying to sell stuff to a town that's not here. That's kind of a poor plan, don't you think? Well, I'm not selling it to the people of the town. The various merchants here in the caravan are trading goods and services with each other. We do this all the time. Just usually there's a town around us when we do it. So yeah. it doesn't doesn't con doesn't bother you that it's just gone. Oh, oh, certainly, certainly it bothers me. I I love the food in the restaurant, mind you, uh, but I tend to sell my goods between here and Adrilanka, and the merchant I was just working with happens to sell his goods between here and the other direction down the long road. You're Sorry. I'm you regularly over? you trade between here and Adrilanka? Why, oh, yes. It, it often takes me more than one year to make the whole trip, but... Is this your... Is this the far end at which you travel from yes. Adrilanka? Yes, I usually turn around at this spot, yes. Hmm. When will you be leaving, sir? I was thinking of maybe leaving in maybe a day or two. Perfect. I will I will be back to talk to you, sir. My name is Aristobulus Ravenscroft. I hail from Adrilanka, and I have need to return there in the near future. You're I would from, like... from the Adrilankan Ravenscrofts? I am indeed. Ooh, he starts fanning himself. A pleasure to make your acquaintance, sir. Thank you. Um, we'll... I would like to talk with you later about perhaps 
traveling with you back to Adralanka. I have need to return there, and perhaps you could use my skills with your caravan. <laughs> I, I, I would be honored, sir. Excellent. In the meantime, my companions and I wish to learn more about what happened to the town that was here. We were here a few days ago, and the town was hale and hearty and full of people. And now it is not. And that disturbs me greatly. Yes, it probably bothers me too. But you were not, you did not see anything. And when you arrived here, how long have you been here? A day? I arrived this morning. So you arrived, the town was gone, but you saw nothing during your journey. That is correct. Possible a cow knocked over a lantern in the barn or something. Uh, that would not do this much damage. Um, everyone give me a perception check. Okay. <clears throat> I've got a nine. I have advantage. I rolled an 18 and a 20, so we'll take the 20. 15, Logan rolled a 16. Oh, wait, I have a plus one in perception, so 10. Okay. Um, you all notice that uh, one of the members of uh, this particular merchant's caravan it has been glowering during your whole conversation. Um, when you, Ari, offered to travel along with him, he glowered a bit more. But just as the conversation has been going on and on and on, his frown has gotten worse and worse and worse. And at this point, he, he is like a human version of Grumpy Cat. And he's just muttering under his breath. He is also wearing robes, by the way. They're much simpler um, than what Ari's wearing. Um, and, and he sort of just, like, mutters to himself and, and walks off a bit. Would you like me to talk to him? <laughs> sure. Okay. Go see what his interest is. Sure. I'll go follow him. And I will attempt to use some stealth to not be noticed. Okay. Will a 24 work? Uh, well, I rolled a four to counter it, so probably. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so way to, way to give the old heave ho, DM. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, so I'm going to try to just follow him and uh, obviously not be noticed and just see what he's up to. He barely notices that he's at a wagon. <laughs> <laughs> he's Basically, I, 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 I could be sitting on top of his head and he wouldn't notice, right? <laughs> he might notice that only because... <laughs> Of, of the additional weight on his shoulders. <laughs> okay. Um, this is not a muscular man. He's a wizard. That kind of goes hand in hand. Yes. All right. For this particular merchant, I will ask that if he hears of or encounters any survivors of this town to please ha direct them my way. Uh, you know, take note of my appearance, what I'm wearing. You know, give them my description and ask them to please find me. Well, yes, certainly. I'll make sure Thank you. to do that. Thank you. I mean, while, while Punk is stealthing, uh, I think we now want to try to find a survivor, if we can. Okay. Um, if you're looking I, for survivors, give me an investigation check. Another thing I'm good at. If it's got int, I'm good at it. Okay, I've got 18 plus 2. I have 11 plus 7, so 18. M Meepo does a better job just because she's lowered to the ground where, where all the evidence is. Yeah. She's also cute. This is, this is true. That is also she's a true. Ball. She's yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, and is Obeim investigating also or no? Sorry, standby. Was getting some fries. <laughs> is Logan investigating? I'm sorry. Is Fenix investigating? He's getting some. He's getting a sandwich. Ah. Okay. Um, um I got I rolled a twenty-one. Well, plus whatever my what my investigation, is. which is a plus three, so eighteen plus three. Okay. Um. So, Meepo, you find, um, a basement. In um, inside the foundation of one of the buildings, um, there there was a trapdoor. It was covered in ash, um, 
and when you pry it open, there's no one inside, and there are marks on this trap door like it was opened up while the building was burning. Um, oh. Yes. And Ari, you find some bloodstains. It's hard to find them because most things have been charred up and covered with ash, but you do find some spots where where the blood w was still obvious. Obame finds a footprint. Um, that any, anything I recognize? It's <coughs> not human. It has claws. is it cobalt? Um, it's possible that Vex would be able to identify the footprint a bit better. It is. It is. Um. It is too large to be a cobalt footprint. Oh, um, okay. Hey, Vex, um, you want to come check this out? You can't because uh, he oh, that's right. Off. He's not. He's <laughs> off in the forest. <laughs> yes. Yeah. He is communing with nature. Oh, hey, Theoden's in chat. Hey, Theo. Hey, Theo. Long time no see. All right. Um. But th this track is obviously not human, and it doesn't correspond to any of the more civilized races that you are aware of. It doesn't look like a Dragonborn footprint, but Dragonborn tend to wear boots anyway. So... My fellow people... If a Dragonborn was running through town barefoot, it still wouldn't look like this. <laughs> oh. Akari is also in chat. And now following the channel. And... <laughs> Akari, I promise you, I'm not killing Vex today. Just not today. It's coming soon, though. Yeah, I already promised I wouldn't kill Shepard. Um, so that's good, too. He, he, he is very protective of his puppy. And he knows what country I'm in, and that's enough information for him to track me. <laughs> <laughs> what? No. No. Theo. All right, so in any case, um, you all find these little things scattered around. E each of you is looking at a different place. You each found these separate from each other. Uh, let's switch over to Punk. What would you like to do while you are standing in plain sight next to a wizard who has not noticed you at all? Just really uh, see if I can hear what he's saying, if he's still talking under his breath. He, he's muttering under his breath about dark forces and how they really shouldn't be there and he he, he disagrees your sense is he disagrees strongly with his employer's decision to stay here and continue to do some business with the other merchant caravans that are all trading goods with each other okay you also uh, gather that that the name of his employer is humphrey endoblast humphrey endoblast okay. yes um, I'll, uh, both from the muttering and also because it's written in very large letters on the side of all the wagons. It says Humphrey Endoblast Emporium of Useful Goods. Gotcha. All right. I'll um, just leave him alone for now and go back and tell the group what I found. Okay. I resisted the urge to sap. <laughs> and we are all very proud of you. But I'm going to have to take away your point of inspiration now. No. Um... <laughs> Can I sense anything spiritual or undead around the area? Maybe some sort of presence hidden in the the destruction of everything? I don't know if I get an aura about it. Um, do you have an ability that lets you do that? Let's see. Religion? That's just a skill. Uh, I was thinking that Jesus was on my side. <laughs> yes, uh, unfortunately, you picked a different deity. Ah, Help, me. Help me, Jeebus. <laughs> Um, no, I don't, history, insight, I don't know. Um. Trying to go to my two best things. <laughs> you already Inside did an investigation check, and you discovered a footprint. Okay, footprint, all right. Was it a magical footprint? <laughs> was there a what footprint? Was it a magical footprint? It was, it did not appear to be radiating magic in any way. Well, we could try detect magic and see if we can find anything useful with that. Okay. I'll use my once a day cast without using a spell slot, and we will give it a shot and see what we can dig up. Okay, several of the merchants do have magical items in their wagons. Uh, some, of the, some of the guards. I'm sorry. 
I'm not as worried about them. I'm more looking kind of at the, where the houses were, where no, they were, no where the foundations or whatever that are still left. None of that appears to be radiating magic in any way, shape, or form. Everything that's radiating magic is either on the party or part of the caravans or their accompanying staff. Got it. Okay. I wasn't too worried. I'm not, I figured some of them would have something, but uh, they're here selling. Why wouldn't they have a couple of magical goodies? Um, all right. So I don't know. We've, been in, we've been in a pattern of undead or something like that. So, I mean, you know, figure yeah. out and see, what, see why not. They, they they were good choices to make, but you're not getting any vibes of, oh, we know what took this town out. You just know the town is gone. Right. And it appears to have been by, well, do we know what, was it all fire? Was there any acid damage? Was there any uh, electricity damage? That no. is a very good question. Um, so, uh, from from what you could see, and I'm just going to say this from the, the, the score you already got from your investigation check. The damage that you're mostly seeing is fire. You don't see anything that looks like it was caused by a lightning strike, although that would afterwards look like fire damage as well. Um, you don't see anything that was dissolved. Um, you do see a few marks that look like they might have been made by bladed weapons or blunt weapons um, in some places that look fresh enough that they, they happened possibly while you were gone, possibly before you left, but uh, nothing really supernatural. Did an army come through here? We got one footprint. Thanks, Tom. I don't know if there's anything else. Yeah. Um, everyone give me one more perception check. I rolled a 20, and I have a plus one, so 21. Okay, so that's good enough. You notice a familiar mechanical beetle that's keeping its distance. 18 to 20, uh, 18 plus 5, so 23. You notice it as well. Anyone who gets over 15 notices it. Okay. Uh, hey, look, guys, there's a shiny beetle again. It's over there. It's It's... Um, Fiddle Punch's small beetle is not the one that he rides. Yeah. It's his drone. <coughs> the one with Can the we... matrix printer built into it. Yeah. <laughs> Does, do we know, can he, he can see through that thing, can he? You don't know. Okay. You know he can use it to send messages. I will make an obscene gesture at it. <laughs> hey, a fiddle punch, do you hear us? We need some help here. It, um, the, the beetle lifts one of its six legs up at you, and it could be waving high, or it could be repeating the gesture back, but it has no fingers, so you don't know. <laughs> That's fine. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Fiddle Punch, we seem to have a rather interesting... It flies off to the north. Okay. Let's go follow oh. Well, I'm, I wanted to. Uh. We want to talk to the other guy or what? Um, well, we don't know how far Fiddle Punch is. I don't want to necessarily. Um, how far away is the beetle? I mean, it can um, fly faster than we can walk. It can fly. You know that it can fly faster than you can walk, but at this point, it flew off about 20 feet away, and then stop and I turn use, around to look at you again. Can I use Mage Hand to bring it over here? Nice. Um, okay, so Mage Hand is going to have to make, I would say, let's go with, let's go with a dexterity check, because you control the hand. Mm -hmm. so, so give me a dexterity check to see if you can grapple it. Okay. Um, so dexterity is plus one, and I rolled a 17. Okay, so Mage Hand grabs this mechanical beetle and brings it over to the party. There's the beetle. Hi, beetle. Its wings are flapping furiously, and its legs are moving as it tries to get out of the hand. 
It's not so happy now, guys. Fiddle Punch uses this to, to, to send messages to it, or does he use it to send messages elsewhere? You've seen it used to give messages to the party and to the Idris family. Okay, so it, it, it's printer prints out messages. Yes. So, but we don't know how to return messages through it, if, if it can even do that. It can take a message back, but what it does, the one time you saw it do that, it printed something out. There was a space on the paper, and it gave you some ink. And a, right. Yeah, and Vex wrote the message on. It took the paper and flew away. Flew away. Got it. Okay. At this point, it's not doing anything with paper. It's just buzzing and trying to get it out of Meepo's grasp. Okay. It's an angry little beetle. So, somebody talk to it, maybe? Hey, Fiddle Punch, why don't you come to us for a change? Let it go. Are you sure? Yeah. Okay. And I let it go. Bye, shiny beetle. It flies. Don't be so mad. It flies north about 20 feet, turns around, and looks at you. Maybe yeah. we should follow him. Yeah, I guess we have to follow it. All right. Let's follow the beetle. Okay. It leads you north out of town, or what's left of it, into the woods. Um, you go maybe about a quarter mile into the woods and just find Vex um, sprawled in the leaves, looking up at the trees above him and sighing heavily, enjoying himself immensely, uh, while Shepard is romping through the foliage trying to catch a leaf. Um, it's a very angry leaf, apparently. It must be destroyed. Um, That's adorable. Well, Shepard is, yes. Yeah. You have to roll against cuteness. Uh, <laughs> at disadvantage. <laughs> and once the beetle is aware that all the party members are there, it starts moving in circles on the forest floor. And I am not going to make Ari roll for this because it is so obvious. It is using its legs in the very soft dirt underneath the leaves to carve out a circle with arcane runes built in. And your best guess is this is a circle that can be used for transportation magic. I think he's creating a teleportation circle. Is he... Bring in something here, or are we going somewhere? I don't know. Let's wait for it to finish and see. At the time you finish saying this, now, now, Ari, you know, because you've seen this done many times before um, in your training and whatnot, that arcane circles of any kind, especially for teleportation, need to be mathematically precise because if you're off a little bit sometimes you might be inside a wall and that doesn't work out so well for anyone nope. involved no nope. tends to be fatal it scratches this out so fast and so perfectly you have <laughs> never seen it done to this level of precision in twice this amount of time and it finishes scratching everything out and this moves over to the side of the circle, looks at the party, and in a very fiddle punch like gesture, starts tapping one of its feet on the ground. Um, I think it wants us to go in. I think so, since I can't do that kind of magic yet. How will it accommodate us all or just it, one it at is, a time? It is large enough that if you if you still had the large barrel of gear grinder special, you could put that in the circle too. Okay. Everybody Mount up, so to speak. Drag, okay. drag Vex along with us. Are we sure he wants to come? <laughs> he sulks a bit. He sulks a bit, but calls Shepard over, and you all get in the circle, and it does its thing. Does anyone try to roll to resist? Punk is considering it. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm good. I'm good. Okay. Um. So... There's a flash of light, 
And when your eyes clear, you are in a circular room with lots of books and notes on tables and whatnot, and a very large contraption covered in a dust cloth that you know is a telescope because you've been in this room before. You are on the top floor of Marwood's Tower. We got, well, we moved pretty far. That was really cool. Do it again. Do it again. Go back and forth. You you hear a voice from right below you. Oh, good. You survived. All right. Uh, I'll be right there. And, and there's some thumps as Fiddle Punch comes up the stairs um, and into this laboratory area to greet you. I was a little worried, uh, especially with the um, uh, the attack that happened. I didn't know. If you would make it back or not, I certainly wasn't going to stay there. Well, what did happen? happen? Um, I believe that you called them gnolls. The same monsters that were in Gore's Gate, only there was a lot more of them. There may have been, by my estimate, 157 of them. Oof, (laughs) to be exact. Yeah, just to estimate. Well, uh, technically, it, it was 155 of them, but two of them were skeletal gnolls, and that was kind of weird. That is weird. Hmm. Undead. Uh, <coughs> we don't like having undead anything around here. Yeah. Well, most of them were quite alive, and uh, fortunately, I did have a... Um, a get out of there free ticket that I punched. Um, and, and he shows you a wooden disc that is snapped in half. Yeah, I had one of those. Oh, you do? Uh, they are yeah, quite handy. The Idris family gave me one. He, he raises an eyebrow at that but says nothing. Um, in any case, how did it go? Well, I want to say badly. Um, Husan, or no, yeah, Husan and well, Oregano. He, Fiddle Punch already knows about Husan because okay. that was the dwarven mining town. Okay. Uh, Husan Oregano, first, yeah. Watson second. <laughs> oh, no. Both of those towns are gone. I don't know is the third town was, no, actually, that, I don't know was the fourth town that was destroyed because Oregano was third. In any case, you you relate your story. We, we have a, a, a fade out, fade in, so we don't have to go over all the details. Vex pulls the giant salt crystal and the tracking device out of his bag and gives him the fiddle punch. And he's like, he, well, he, I realize that I'm not using a webcam, so no one can see my expression on my face when I say he's like. Um, he, he looks at the device and he shakes it a little bit. And the red light that's just going solid starts flashing. And he says, This should have started flashing a while ago. You weren't doing any maintenance on this? Doing what? Maintenance. It it means constantly fixing things that are broken. Oh. So that they don't get broken worse. This thing is buzzing a lot. That probably shook some of the connections apart. That light should have been flashing red this entire time. Come so, to think of it, I really shouldn't be holding it right now. It, flashing is bad, right? Flashing is bad, yes. And he opens the back okay. compartment and he, and he pulls out a couple wires and it stops flashing all together. Oh, so that's better. Gonna, that's going to take some work to put back together again, but at least the tower is not going to explode. And he sets that down to the side and he picks up the salt crystal and looks at it. Hmm. This is fascinating, though. Um, Punk? Yeah? Would you like to do me a favor that involves hitting things? Maybe. He takes the salt crystal over to a small anvil that's sitting in the corner, sets it down on top of the anvil, and says, Would you mind doing the honors? What's it gonna do? break the salt off of it. 
You don't think that you did all this for a piece of salt, did you? Is it going to blow up? I am 97.3% sure that it will not. Hey, Fenix, you want to try it? Uh, yeah. Okay, give me an attack roll. Ponk steps back safely, distant. distant. Uh, 16. Uh, 16 is good enough. It explodes, you all die. <laughs> no, 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 no. Um, I'm assuming that you used your longsword for this? He did. Okay. Um, so, here's how it goes. The sword slices through the salt cleanly about halfway through and then hits something that it can't go through. But salt is not known for its flexibility, so it still cracks open and... The salt that was surrounding this thing shatters and flies off in all directions, and there is a small something still sitting on the anvil, unscathed, even after your longsword strike. Fiddle Punch comes over and picks it up. It's a little hard to describe. It is not a gem. It is gem size. It's a sizable gem, if it was a gem. Um, but gems will have facets, they will have edges, whether they're smooth and curved or angular and sharp. Uh, this has neither of those. It's not moving, but it appears to be moving. Um, you get the sense of looking at the ocean and waves when you look at this, even though you know it's not moving. And he says, this, this, my friends, is what you were after. What is it? I'm not 100% sure. But I know some things about it based on my readings that I've gotten from a distance. And he goes over to another contraption that you don't remember being there the last time you were in this tower. Um, Meepo's never been in this tower before, so she has no memory of this whatsoever. Um, but he, this contraption has like three prongs that are evenly spaced and pointing towards a spot in the air about a foot above this contraption and he takes this thing and places it right where all those three prongs are pointing at and lets go and just sort of hovers there and a bunch of lights on this thing light up and some numbers appear and he takes a few notes and he says yes yes this I can use this I can use um this is going to help me pinpoint the others. Matter of fact, it probably would only take me a day or two, but I can probably use this to find the others and get you within range of them. It would sure be taking a trip through the swamp every time you want to bring something back. Mm, take us to the others. Oh, yeah. By, by my calculation, there are four of these. All of these except for the gap. Four of what? I don't understand the thing you guys are talking about today. Sorry, and I missed half of it. <laughs> okay, well, um, let, let's, let's put it this way. You know that circle that you stood in that brought you here? Yeah. Uh -huh. That only works if you know where you're going. It worked to bring you here because I'm the one who told the beetle how to do it, and I knew where here was, and I knew a lot about where here is. Okay. With this, and he points at the thing that's hovering, I can send you somewhere I've never been. Oh. So and you want us to get the other ones of these little red things? I personally am okay if you don't. And Vex says, I would very much like to. Those are going to get us home. Right? Exactly. I see. I yeah. see. Gotcha. Oh. They're beacons. More like focal points. Or, Good enough. No, that's not quite right. They allow you to create a focal point, and wherever that focal point wow. is, that's where things move between worlds. Got it. 
Some of my readings are a little weird, though. At least one of these is moving. And moving a lot. Anywhere near here? Oh, no. That one's really far away from here. Uh, the closest one to here, and he does a few more calculations, and he looks at a map, is... It might be inside this mountain? Or just outside of it? I don't know. And he points to a mountain that... Um, based on your idea of how far it would take to travel is, um, because you'd have to go over a mountain range, probably a couple months journey. But with this, I could probably get you there almost instantaneously. Um, once I raise the probability of error, no, no, lower, lower probability of error, uh, yeah, lower to, to an acceptable amount. What do you think, guys? Is this something we want to go ahead and, and... I'm assuming you want to go ahead and get these. What if I don't want to go back? Fiddle punch shrugs. It's up to you. I'm certainly staying here. Well, I'm sure Fedex... I don't know why I want to, head, want to get, get home. I'm sure Vex does also. Vex well, looks my home is everywhere. Is blue. <laughs> my home is everywhere there are wagons. I don't well, know if I want to go back. People here are nice to cobalts, or at least to me. Not like that back home. Yeah. Now, for Meepo in particular, um, you know that your that cobalts in general are from somewhere else. Mm -hmm. But but she doesn't really have any memories. Well, you know, she she's only four years old. She was born in this world. Oh, okay. The so then she wouldn't know lifetimes. how people treat her in the other world. Okay. I well, get they, it. Kobolds know that they get mistreated everywhere. This is true. Okay. So she would know that much. Yeah. She would know that much, but um, it's been several generations since the Kobolds came over. Oh, okay. So it's not her home. Her home no. is here. <laughs> exactly. Okay. I'm a little upset at Punk right now for what he posted in Discord, but never mind about that. Okay, well, um, if you don't have... As I'm assuming the conversation has trailed off a little bit, Fiddle Punch has his calculations to do. Um, you are fairly close to Coombridge Keep, so you'd be able to go there. If you so wish, you are welcome to spend the night in the tower if you wish to do that instead. Um... As you recall from your last time here, uh, while this is well up the side of a mountain, the pathway has been adjusted to make going up it a lot easier. It's not like you need repelling gear. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I, it would be easier to just stay in the, the tower, but Punk's not a big fan of <laughs> Fiddle Punch. So. You, you, you also have some spending cash. Yeah. We I do. can bribe people for wagons. <laughs> I'm honestly surprised you didn't try to, to buy or sell anything to those merchants. F find the local Conestoga uh, dealer. <laughs> <laughs> they see you coming and just like, no, no, not you again. Uh, the, the 19s are coming in next week. <laughs> <laughs> and they're going back out again. Uh, I'd say we go back to Coomridge. Yeah, that's fine. Hey, uh, how long has it been since we've been kind of out and doing all this? I mean, it's it's uh, it's what spring. It, it's still spring. Um, okay. you, you left with the spring thaw, okay. and you've been gone a couple of weeks now. I'm guessing. Okay. I I haven't been keeping track of the exact days nah, of the past. That's fine. If we go back to Coomridge, maybe I'll look for old Bob. What do you think? Uh, he Fenix, won't be you back, back until fall. Oh. You want to head back to uh, Coomridge, Phoenix? Anywhere. <laughs> there might be wagons. <laughs> yeah. All right. So we'll head yeah. over there. Plus, I, I have to check on my crime syndicate. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's right. <laughs> that's, I, I am the kingpin of Coomridge. <laughs> Um, unfortunately, a lot of what you were doing when you were working for Old Bob was making sure there wasn't a crime syndicate, 
Um, so oh. <laughs> you, there's like there's a few kids that are school bullies. I thought I was just that taking out means, all the competition. <laughs> or, yes, but but now there's nothing going on. You you got a couple kids, and everyone else is too scared to do crime because all the people who are doing crime met messy ends. Uh, nature abhors a vacuum. We've got to fix this. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're chaotic neutral, right? Yes, I am. <laughs> I thought so. I thought so. <laughs> If I could make him into the Joker, I would. <laughs> <laughs> Careful, you said that out loud to the DM. That would be a wonderful ride. <laughs> I'd be down for that. <laughs> we'll have some climatic battle where you're on a catwalk above a giant vat of acid. And I can, <laughs> I can say to Ari, why so serious? <laughs> <laughs> we find someone dressed up as a bat. <laughs> Actually, no, I, I'm pretty sure that in Dungeons and Dragons, there are monsters that are part man, part bat. A bat man, if you will. <laughs> we can make this happen. We can I'm make down. this happen. All right. <laughs> <sighs> okay, well, we've been doing this for one hour. Do we need to take a break or can we keep going? I'm okay. Can we take a I, I, I'm going to just take a quick break. I mean, I'll be okay. all right back. Okay. So let, let's take five. Um, okay. And we'll be back shortly. Hey, this is Crash Jumping in right in the middle just to give you a little bit of additional news that I didn't talk about in the main recording that we did. Uh, so I'm recording this after the fact. Uh, there's still a few surprises heading your way right at the end. It's going to be something that you may have suspected, something you may not have suspected. But Ari's in for a surprise, I'll tell you that much. Moving on, uh, as mentioned at the beginning of this show, uh, this is being live-streamed. So at this point, every Saturday at 7.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on my Twitch channel, twitch.tv slash thearchiveplays, uh, we are going to be recording our shows live. A uh, bit of a warning, while I do have uh, the D&D equivalent of a swear jar available every now and then, someone says something that you would not hear in the recordings that I've been uploading to YouTube and my website. So take that with a grain of salt. Maybe it's better if you are listening to these with children that you listen to the recorded versions on those two places rather than going to Twitch to see it live. One last thing, if you are really enjoying the show, uh, please tell a friend about us. Uh, share our Facebook page or give a link to a friend or something or tell them about how they subscribe to this podcast in their podcatcher of choice. We are on iTunes and there is an RSS feed for our show on the website, so you could do that also. It would be really cool if more people than just a small handful of individuals including the people who are participating in the show were listening to this craziness that we're doing well that's about everything so let's get right back on into the show all right we are back and in the time that it's taken um the entire party has managed to make it back to town so you are in coomridge uh well coomridge keep specifically the town of coomridge keep not the keep itself where would you like to go? The wagon oh. store. <laughs> <laughs> you head to the wagon store. The wagon merchant just sees Fennec's coming, and he goes, no, 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 no. He, 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 like, I tried, buddy. Pushes I tried. everyone inside. Like, Give me the wagon. The door. Um, you see the window. There's just a sign that says open, and it flips over to say, sorry, we're closed. The blinds go down. You hear a <laughs> boom, buzz. I tried, buddy. I tried. I tried. <laughs> I have two places he wants to head to. Um, first, he'll try to sell off the phase spider components uh, to potion maker, scribe maker, scroll maker, whichever one he can find that will offer him the best deal for the parts. There is a shop in town that does have a uh, potions maker. Um, you, you've seen it before. It's not frequented very often. Um, but there is a merchant inside who is happy to, um, purchase your, 
now slightly gooey <laughs> yeah. um, components. Um, I had no way to preserve them. Yeah, well, I'm going to ask you to make a persuasion check. I'm not bad at those. Don't you want to haggle? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Persuasion is plus five. So, and that's a 13. So plus five is 18. And that's a lot higher than my roll. So um, you, he offers you about, well, in the condition that they're in, um, he, he offers you about 300 gold for the lot. I will take it. Okay. And he yeah. offers to rinse the bag out, too. <laughs> you can keep that. <laughs> you, you're too kind. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'll take it. I'll take it. I'll take care of it. I'm a nice guy, sort of. Someone might know prestidigitation. Yeah, <laughs> I do. <laughs> <laughs> Scourgeify. Boom. <laughs> Immolate it with a fireball. Yeah. No. no. It's clean now. Yeah. Uh, the other place he needs to visit is the Idris family keep uh, to get rid of this tainted amulet that we found. Okay. Um, Meepo wants to go with. <laughs> Meepo may come on. with. Meepo may come Yay. with. Okay, uh, where are we going? I want to introduce her to the Idris family. Okay. Or more importantly, introduce the Idris family to Meepo. All right, so I'm going to skip over the whole process of going up and announcing yourself and being escorted to wherever the Idrises are inside the castle and all that. Um, you are in one of their several libraries, um, and um, Ardent is happy to see you. He says, back from Adrilanka so soon. Uh, not quite. We got diverted, uh, but I'm headed there in shortly after dealing with Mr. F Does he know Fiddle Punch? Oh, yeah. Okay. So, Fiddle Punch has offered... He has something to go, and I wear... It's a long story. <laughs> However, oh, clearly. I am... He well, it always is with Fiddle Punch. Um, <laughs> You've noticed that, too. Yeah. So, once we had... We returned here to take a brief... Take a brief breather, uh, a small rest, and then return... Uh, we're going to investigate something on his behalf, but in the meantime, we're going to head towards Adrilanka first and then go to find what he's looking for. So, but in the meantime, I have something that may warrant your interest and he'll pull out the amulet uh, from the satchel. Okay. This, he'll show it to him. This, we found this off of a conjurer of sorts who brought forth a chain devil. And That's I believe, troubling. Exactly. Uh, he is no longer among the living. Uh, but his amulet here, or focus, uh, I figured you or your father or someone may know how to properly disenchant or dispose of this rather vile thing. I might have a few ways of taking care of that. I figured um, you might. If you could set it down over here. Yep. I'll mage hand it over there. <laughs> okay. So so you just show off. Yeah. Mage hand. Okay. I could clearly just set this down on the table, but no, I'm going to cast a spell. <laughs> I'm going to use to a move it over to the thing that I'm standing next to. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. It's a, it's a cantrip. So well, yeah. yeah, I know. I know. It's, <laughs> it, it's, it's six of one, half a dozen of another, but yeah. The half a dozen happen to be gilded. Yeah. That's okay. Okay. Um, so you do that, and Idris doesn't touch this. He, he I gets, didn't want to touch it any more than I yeah, had to either. <laughs> he, he goes close to it, but he, um, he he casts a few spells over it. Um, you, you recognize a bit of some of the spells he's casting where you know that they're being used to identify it and investigate into it. Yeah, um, divination magic, yeah. which is now my area of expertise. Yeah, and I'm not sure I can destroy this. Could you find a 
place to store it away from where no one can touch it? I can try. Would it be better to say keep it in an extra dimensional space? I have a few of those. Would it be safe to keep it in there for a very long time? I, and I'm going to be very frank with you, I have no idea. I have no idea whatsoever. What is your take on this item? It's cursed. Well, I'm glad no one attempted to attune to it. What's I'm a cursed? Upset. What's it cursed? Very bad dark magic. Um, oh, I, I, okay. Idris, it would hurt you. Sorry. Oh, okay. Bad Idris Chinese. looks over at Ari with a look that you kind of get the sense that he would like to have a conversation with you about <laughs> what Meepo is, but he doesn't think it's socially the right thing to be doing right in front of Meepo right now. Yeah. But later on, you're going to have a chat. Oh, um, yeah. I, and, I intend to. <laughs> and he looks over at Meepo and he says, okay, uh, Mr. Ari is absolutely right. Um, in addition to that, there are some items where the curse becomes very locked in to an individual where you might try to get rid of the cursed item but it comes back to you whether you want it to or not you might try to run very very far away and then you look in your bag and there it is oh that's not good no it no, is not no it's not good at all and is this, this one is, like that I don't know uh, but my father might be able to help me out with that. He's been studying a lot of things longer than I've been around. Okay. And he takes his own mage hand and, and picks up the amulet and moves it very, very far away. Yeah. Well, sir, I will leave this in your capable hands. Uh, I'm not certain how long we are in town. Uh, as Fiddle Punch seem to indicate there was some haste in the matter, but he isn't always the clearest communicator. Oh, he is 100% clear all the time. It's just that not everyone's looking in the same direction that he's pointing. That is true. Uh, if, the, if my comrades agree to stay here another day, I will return and we will have a discussion uh, about, about things I have learned on my recent journey and encountered. I look forward to it. Excellent, sir. With that, I will bid you good day for now. Good day. And I, bye as bye. you are... I'm sorry? Bye-bye. Goodbye, little one. And I, as you are reaching the door, um, Lord Idris just calls out, Oh, and uh, we missed you the last time you came through Coomridge Keep. It would have been nice to talk to you then as well. Have a we good day. were... We were quite busy, and we're still busy. <laughs> I am aware. Have a good right. day. Bye-bye. All right, with that, he'll leave. And I don't know what the rest of the group is going to do at this point. Uh, Let me post following Ari or whatever. Yeah. Punk is becoming oh. a crime lord. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I I'm, am finding not... I'm finding where my throne is. So. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, it was part of a wagon. <laughs> no! No, no. You are the reason why he doesn't have a throne now. Yeah! <laughs> <sighs> and a good time was had by one. Yeah, after my last, my last um, unfortunate issue with, uh, with almost dying... Um, I'm actually looking to see if there's any particular uh, vendors around here that have any type of uh, um, armor or maybe magical armor or something that I, that could benefit me using the, the monetary gains that I have. Uh, well, how much money do you have on you? Uh, let me see here. Probably not enough. Um, okay. Well, what you are able to find is there is an armor vendor okay. whose 
Um, they are dwarven and willing to cut you a deal. Um, in part because they remember you fondly. Um, where you would be able to purchase some chainmail that is made of adamantine. Very good. Is this, um, can I find this on D&D Beyond? Probably. I'm looking in Xanathar's. Okay. Um, the chainmail, he, he'd be, you would be getting it for cheaper than it sells for normally, but he would sell it to you for 500 gold. That's perfect. Phoenix, what are you up to? And I also look in the shops. Okay. What are you looking for? Are there any wagons around? No. <laughs> no, and every time you think you see a wagon off in the distance, whoever is using the wagon moves it out of sight quickly. <laughs> Everybody's no having fun. fun with wagons but me. <laughs> well, I mean, we have uh, we can arm, look, you can ask for armor. I mean, you have weapons you can use. The weapon you have, I think, is really good, Logan, so I think the armor is kind of what we want to look for. What are you looking for in the shops besides wagons? Whoa. Armor, really probably. You, you're probably sure. Well, your armor is of very high quality. And it is dwarven made. Um, you could possibly buy some plate armor that was also adamantine. Um, but adamantine is incredibly rare. So for you, what it would cost would be the base cost of plate armor plus 500 gold. Can I just get an upgrade on my plate armor right now? Um, no. It, it could theoretically be improved through workmanship, but it would take a significant amount of time to do it. Alright, well, I'm good. I'm already buffed as it is. Okay. Um, you notice as you're going from shop to shop and looking for things that you decide later on not to purchase that um, you are being followed. You are being followed by people of your congregation. Oh. Um, as you recall, after the events that unfolded in the battle for Coomridge, um, there was a small number of citizenry who uh, sort of decided to adopt your deity Bahamut and as a paladin of Bahamut you were pretty much the authority on the subject for how to worship Bahamut and they founded a church in Coomridge and a lot of people don't like that because yeah Bahamut's a good dragon but he's a dragon and it was a dragon that kind of did a whole lot of damage to the town and killed most everyone do I notice this too, or is it just him? Um, well, it depends on if you were traveling together or not. We were in the armor, mm -hmm. same armor place, so I'm assuming Okay. So, so yeah, um, so several of the clerics from, not clerks, clerics, um, from the Church of Bahamut, um, ha have noticed that you're in town, they're coming over, and, uh, Lord, Lord Fenix, uh, we, we didn't know you were back. We, we would have prepared a feast in your honor. Um, I, I'm, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say, uh, well, thank you for the offer. And then I just cover my, put my hand over my mouth and say, yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, it, if you are interested, we 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 have something to share with you. We, we think you might appreciate this. Um, as you know, some of the townsfolk here don't really like Bahamut very much um, because of that, that nastiness that happened a while back and sort of blaming all dragons for the crimes of one and whatnot. So uh, we have been working on a, a church, a monastery, if you will, uh, outside of town. 
and we were wondering if we could go over the blueprints with you uh, for how we intend to finish the construction. Sure. Um, he pulls out um, a large diagram, and it it looks pretty nice, actually. It's several buildings. It's a it's a, covering a modest plot of land, but right now in Coomridge, land is cheap um, because of how much of the population was destroyed. Um, and he's going over the various things and putting out where things will be and how many floors different things will be and, and all this. And um, Now, unfortunately, we are a little low on funding Unfortunately, we do not have many members of our congregation, and those of us that are here are, aren't necessarily rolling in gold. Uh, so, uh, at this point, uh, we are not at this stage yet. And someone in the back sort of pipes up, We stacked a couple rocks together. Shh! <laughs> <laughs> this is good and all. I also dug a hole. Shh. It's a pretty good <laughs> hole. Shh. How how much do you how much are we looking for to try and get this started? Um he opens up a scroll that goes over an itemized list of things that need to be done and you have seen zeros before, but you don't always see that many zeros. <laughs> well, this is good and all and I see that we probably can't do this, but hopefully someone can slip it in. Can we add a few wagons? Wagons? Oh, oh, of, of course, Lord Fenix. Uh, we do know about your love for wagons. Uh, you'll notice that this building over here um, is specifically for the storing of wagons. Why not just make it a traveling church on wagons? Or, or, or we can have a a place where people take your wagons and we. We just pop a few, pop a few spray cans and just make decorate the wagons. He doesn't know what a spray can is. Color. And they okay. honestly look aghast when when Punk suggests having the church travel on wagons. And how would we do that after Lord Fenix got the hold of the wagon? Well, in case I would throw it, it all. Exactly. Spare the wagons. The order of the spokes. <laughs> <laughs> you are all spokes in the grand cog of the Church of Bahamut. Do See, what you want to the wagon, the wagon, but leave the girl alone. Exactly. <laughs> well, here, how about this? I'll give you, I'll give you fifty gold, and you can start on with this right now, and see if that helps you out and get started. That'll buy me a new shovel. Shh. <laughs> I'm just saying, I was using a plank to dig the hole. Shh! And the, and the plank. Ow! You stepped on my foot! You stepped on my nothing. foot again! You'll get nothing and like it. <laughs> or you'll get a plank to the face and shut up. Alright, Mr. F Mr. Fenix is busy right now. Let's go ahead and head back to the. Uh, we'll head back to the inn. Okay. And we're going to assume that Vex does something in town, but you don't know what. Correct. Okay. He gets in the bar fight. Punk, you do manage to increase um, your crime syndicate. Excellent. It, it, it now consists of two schoolyard bullies. Uh-huh. Um, one of them is able to collect a tithe of three gold. She is quite powerful. Um, she's the largest third grader in the class. <laughs> I will. I, I will title him the Gooch. Her. 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 Oh, then okay. Then then she is the Gooch. Okay. Um, and you also have a cat uh, who is oh. quite ferocious as well. Awesome. All right. Every, everything's got to start somewhere. Your tithe includes half a mouse. <laughs> the front end or the back end. <laughs> it's the left side. No. But is the lazy beams on the head? <laughs> okay. Anyone else want to do something? No, I need to pray. 
there's a few notes that play. The camera pan, um, fades out, fades back in. It's the next morning. What do you do? Uh, coffee. Coffee is good. <laughs> I need to have another. Of it. I need to have another short conversation with the Idris, with uh, ardent Idris. Uh, but can I, I don't go? think. Can I go? Not this time, Meepo. Um, um, unfortunately, it hey. deals with a branch of magic that you're not quite ready for yet. Okay. While we're waiting, Meepo, we can play some cards. Okay. What are cards? <laughs> Good luck with that, Obey. <laughs> <laughs> Let's explain the intricacies of Solitaire. <laughs> in, in my head canon, and I don't know if Meepo does this, but in my head canon, Meepo doesn't understand that cheating is wrong, so she uses prestidigitation. <laughs> oh, she totally would do that. <laughs> yeah, so she understands how to play. Yeah. She, she puts just... down 10 aces. <laughs> I win, right? <laughs> is, and is, is there three a, in his hand. Is there a version of poker in this, uh, <laughs> this world? This is probably a version of most card games. Mostly Euchre, yeah. probably. Ah. I don't know right. any of the rules for Euchre, but I'm going to assume that it exists. Um, anyone in the, anyone in the uh, in the bar who might be interested in playing a game? Probably. Ah, all right. Anyone up for a game? Oh, yeah, I'm always up for poker. And I, 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 just, I just say to myself, oh, something's going to go down. <laughs> All right. Oh, yeah, we'll, we'll we'll start a game. Just you know, grab a, a local who wants to play, and uh, I don't know. Just what, what's the buy-in, guys? Like uh, maybe just a couple of copper just to start. We'll do a couple of copper for now. Most people okay. in Coombridge aren't um, flush with cash. There, this is a way for them to get cash. There's, there's get a few bloody. exceptions. <laughs> the the people who deal with things like magical items and potions and um, the the more skilled blacksmiths will have a decent amount of money, okay. but none of them are hanging out in an inn right now. Can I play? Of course, Is it, sure. is it like the card we played before? Or is this Sure. Different? Sure. Okay, how do you play? Now, see, we're in Coomridge. If you get that hand, you have to give all your money to me. But if we were in <laughs> What's Now, then I would give all my money to you. <laughs> I don't understand now, now this Now, careful. Game. Careful, because you just made up a town name, and I might include it in the game. <laughs> okay, so what skill do you use to win your round? What skill are you asking? going to roll? And and give me... I, I'm on board with this, but you got to tell me why that skill is applicable. You can also have proficiency with a playing card deck. Ari has it. <laughs> oh, <laughs> you could it is a say tool. it is a tool proficiency, and Ari has it. So, do not play cards with Ari. <laughs> Ari's like, I, I don't know any of the rules. You're gonna have to explain it to me. And then he does that thing where you shuffle the cards where they flap into the air, yeah, and sort exactly. of like arc over and land in the other hand. Yeah, mm. exactly. Heck, because I your have card? <laughs> with, with, it with, with your that, credit card. Would that be uh, athletics, or would that be uh, acrobatics? If, if, if you can explain to me why that skill would be pertinent, you can use it. Um, suggestions would be things like sleight of hand, like say if you were intending to cheat. Um, Never. Performance, if you wish to bluff. Hmm. Um, or just flat out lie, deception. Invest <laughs> investigation, if you intend to try to catch anyone else cheating. Maybe, maybe we ought to just work too. Maybe we ought to just table this for for later. I'm I'm thinking about maybe setting up a three card Monty stand. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he is totally going to be a kingpin. Yes. By the by the end of by the end of this campaign, everyone else is going to go home, and he's just going to be like walking around in like three piece suits and stuff. Yep. <laughs> Have a Tommy crossbow. I want to. I want to actually send the Gooch out to uh, to get a box, like a, like a, like a wooden crate or something like that, so that uh, uh, when we're ready, I can have her set up the uh, three card money stand. <laughs> well, while we're doing the poker thing, if we're doing it, I want to make sure we check out. I have insight to make sure nobody's lying to me or anything. Like while they're you know doing their hands. <laughs> so so there's really like no locals in here who. There's, 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 there's a local or two that are willing to play a game. 
right. Yeah. That's why I was asking about your skill checks. Oh, okay. 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 I got gotcha. you. I, gotcha. yep. I was going to say, I mean, we make the opening hand, you know, like the buy in two copper or something. Just keep it simple. And okay. I, yeah, definitely. And the inside okay. would be my thing to see if anybody's lying or they're bluffing or something like that. Okay. okay so are you guys letting me play or not? Of course. Of okay. course. So she just played a game using prestidigitation the whole time. She's going nice. to do that again. So. <laughs> Because she doesn't know any better. <laughs> and my insight will tell me if you're cheating or not. It's not cheating if you don't know what you're doing. <laughs> if you're just winning on luck, that's no, not cheating. Okay. Okay. Nobody Obain. explained the rules to her. So. <laughs> Obin, give me an insight check. Oh, that's easy. So do I need to roll something? Or... Um, Should we roll initiative to see whose turn it is? <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to be playing fast and loose with a lot of rules for this. That's uh, fine. Okay. 26. Oof. She keeps every, every card she puts down as an ace. <laughs> she was told that is the best card. So every card she puts down as an ace. She it's discarded crazy. three aces. <laughs> and then when she put your hand down at the end when you called, she had five aces. <laughs> Did I win? Did I win? Uh, sure. Sure. Okay, good. Yay. And but you the might want to see... just looking at this strange lizard-like creature <laughs> that is pulling aces out of everywhere. Has no idea what she's doing. They, 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 just, they just shake their heads. They don't ask for their back. They just go back to their tables. They're, they're, they're not playing. Uh, all right. Okay. Maybe another time. Ari. After you tell Meepo that this is a trip where you're going to be taking it by yourself, you get the last of your stuff together to, to head to um, the keep itself to talk to Lord Idris, and um, you notice something. You have the amulet. Oh, well, that's fun. It will be. All right. Well, then I will head back to the Idrises. Uh, where did it appear? Um, you just noticed that it was in a pocket. <clears throat> okay, on my cl in my robe of eyes somewhere. All right. Yeah. Uh, hmm. Okay. Um, then Ari will will Ari will head to the Idris family, uh, their abode. And go talk to Lord Ardent. Okay. Um, show him the amulet. Apparently, this thing has attached itself to me. I had a suspicion when I went to go examine it and it wasn't there anymore. Um, clearly, it... So I did not believe I attuned to it, so somehow it has latched on to me. Um... What do you suspect? It's evil and cursed and should be destroyed. I agree. Now how to do that? Well, would you like to try plan A? I'd love to hear your plan A. We have a crematorium. Okay. That's powered uh, by fire elementals. Ooh, that might help. And it can't hurt to try it. And we're um, not I, using it too much because we don't have an undead plague anymore. That is true. I also have Remove Curse as a spell. I don't know if that even can care about that. Oh. Uh, hmm. I say try to remove the curse first, but yeah. I, yeah, but <laughs> I didn't. I did not. I didn't. I didn't think Obame was high enough level for that. Uh, and and uh -huh. Obame isn't here. Obame is playing cards with a kobold. That <laughs> no, but I didn't, <laughs> I didn't realize that. <laughs> I didn't Never realize mind. Obame. No, no, no. But I didn't realize Obame could actually cast the remove curse spell. Uh, I didn't think he was high enough level for that. I thought that was a. Oh wait, he's fifth now, didn't he? He leveled yeah, he up. Dinged. Okay. Uh, but Ari's not that religious, so he might have forgotten about that. Okay. Um, uh, I mean, you know what? Let me make an int check just for my own sakes. All right. So I got a fifteen. All right. So he does. He'll remember that. Um, I have a. You, you remember the Dwarven priest? Obey, Obey. Yes. He has now, I believe, able to attempt to remove curses. 
from items. I don't know if this was in, is within his power, but I say we let him give it a shot first, and then if that fails, we try the fire elementals. Okay. Now, on to an, uh, another topic. Meepo. She is a unique creature. And Ari will be uh, trying to evoke a... He's pleased with Meepo kind of vibe. Uh, he's fascinated by what she can do. Is uh, she related to Dragonborn by any chance? I think so. But it's like she's something like, I don't know, a, a, a different breed of Dragonborn? I don't know. that She's a kobold is what she calls herself. And we found several of these creatures underneath whatever town in that, where we found Meepo. And I, it's unexplainable how quickly she catches on to magic, but she does it in a totally different way. It's fascinating how quickly she adapted to even the simplest spells. It's like magic's in her blood or something. My daughter Which... does that, actually. <laughs> what? My daughter. She's uh, oh. uh, She'll probably be a very powerful sorceress when she grows up. Sorcery. That's what it is. That's what she's doing. She, she... These kobold creatures are... I don't know how to explain it. At least Meepo is at least special in some way. I don't know if all of them can adapt as quickly as she did. But if so, that is something we need to be perhaps wary of or at least cultivate, depending on how many kobolds slip between the worlds to here. How many did you see? Our uh, player doesn't remember. There were uh, about 20 to 25 in Meepo's group. Okay. And we assume there were other groups. They told you there were other groups, yes. Okay. Um, they so were one of our, the weaker groups. That's why they right. weren't in the initial assault. They were right. picking up the leavings afterwards. Gotcha. So he'll pay, he'll give that information to Arden. Um In my opinion, if we could somehow, I don't know, throw out the olive branch or try to uh, work with these kobolds, they could potentially be a valuable ally. And how quickly, because of how quickly they adapt to and can tackle magical energies. I'm not sure that I'm the right person to look into that, but I think I know someone who would be. Excellent. And I would say put them on it. I think I'll be contacting them after this conversation. After we see what we can do with that troublesome amulet of yours. I agree. Uh, I don't believe my companions are in any rush to leave. To investigate Fiddle Punch's focal points. Um, if Obame cannot remove the item or remove the curse from the item, then I will be back and we'll see what the fire elementals can do to it. Okay. Hopefully. You will, well, let's put it this way. Either way, it should be destroyed. I agree. <clears throat> I do not I do not like its presence among my person. I don't and, like that it's in my town. <laughs> I kind of agree. And I wasn't a planning... To, you were the only person I know who had any capability of possibly destroying it. Um, I know. I, I don't fault you for that. But this... This might be worse than I thought. Very well. I understand. If nothing else, we will be leaving town hopefully within two days. Uh, perhaps even sooner. If we can get to Adralanka quickly enough um, 
If nothing, if we're not teleported by fiddle punch, we'll be leaving on on horseback as quickly as we can. Uh, but it's my, I'm going to talk to Obeim first. If he can't remove the curse, then I will be back to talk to you, uh, and then perhaps leave the next day. If Akari was here, Vex would be muttering something about losing the horses again. <laughs> again. <laughs> Uh, with that, unless Lord Idris has anything further for me, he will leave. Okay. So I assume you go back to the inn and say, hey, Obeim, I've got a job for you? <laughs> Pretty much. And I'm assuming Obeim it. cast remove curse? Uh, Obeim would like to uh, grab his... Uh, where's that? His uh, holy amulet, and we were going to try and remove the curse. Now the curse will remove uh, its hold of you. However, it is still cursed, and we will have to find a way to destroy it or get it out of the town. Is there anything else that that spell description says besides what you've just said? No. Okay. All right. I believe Lord Idris may have a way to destroy the item. Uh, we're going to see if we can throw it into the heart of however many fire elementals they used at their crematorium to burn all their previously dead bodies before the undead plague was cured and we'll hope that their magical energy is enough to destroy this item do we have any particular bag that we can put this in to hold it or uh, is this something we're gonna have to because the chances of it getting back to somebody might be pretty great uh, the only thing i can think of would be punk's extra dimensional space okay i don't know if my haversack uh bag would help um uh your bag's an inch i think your bag's an extra dimensional space i'm not I, I think I it a, is too. You're not supposed on to put a player portable level. Holes in yeah, it. yeah. You're not supposed to put a portable hole in it. <laughs> <laughs> not unless you really want to be in a random location in the astral plane. Yeah. Uh, so, let's see. Do you have anything? Do you have anything else in your haversack besides normal equipment? No, no, no. I have, um, I have my some of my tools in there. I have my, uh, my uh, metalworking tools, and that's it. Because the last thing we want to do is let this cursed amulet be attuned to. By the chicken that is hiding out in Ponk's extra dimensional. <laughs> I agree. I agree. I would, oh, that chicken would, be I would rage. <laughs> I would okay. rage and kill whoever harms him. All right, we'll, we'll put it in the haversack. That's you. Fine. You have okay. tried to kill him, haven't you? On I'm allowed to try to kill him. Nobody else is, though. <laughs> Vex certainly has. Yeah. Yeah, but uh, like I said, we do not want to risk the chicken having access to a necromantic. <laughs> Amulet of whatever it might be. You know what? There, there goes my entire storyline because I was yeah, plotting for to be the end. Of. I have taken the campaign off the rails. I know. <laughs> oh, this is what happens when you have, when you don't railroad players. <laughs> okay, let's go ahead and start the start the uh, ceremony. Okay. okay. Um. So you cursed. ask for the amulet to be out and about so that you can cast the spell and, um. Ari can't find the amulet. What? Tarnation. You, you may have left it in your other robe. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect, Nugent. But wherever you were keeping it, it's not there. Everybody check their pockets and on them. See if they can, if, if something happened to them. Do I have it in the, uh, in the, no. uh, already in the uh, dimension? Well, you can check. Go ahead and check. Okay. You hear a chicken? Oh, I'd still like Obeim to go through with the ritual just to make sure that whatever curse might be on me about it. Yeah, because I can I can uh, remove curse from him. Yeah. But it'd still be on the amulet, right? No, well, it's, it's going to be on the amulet anyway. It still has to be on right. oh, okay. the amulet anyway, but clearly okay. we're dealing with an intelligent item of some sort if it's fleeing me, but let's let's go through with the with the a ritual just to be safe. Okay. You cast remove curse. Yep. Ari, you don't feel any different. I didn't feel any different when it was hanging around my neck either. It wasn't or on around me. your neck. You found it in a well, pocket. Yeah. I didn't feel any different when it was on my person. So it must have been hitching a ride somewhere. Where did it so, go? Mipa's going to start digging through her bag to see if she has an extra shiny. You find a shiny. What did I find? Um, it's the amulet that you got from the magic store. Oh, yeah. Way back when. 
The one that's made of a a fantasy version of plastic. Right, yeah. (laughs) She puts that one back on, plays with it. Um, Vex tries using speak with animals to talk to the chicken again and mutters something about it being sassy and annoying. (laughs) He also says it hasn't seen the amulet either. Well, I don't know. That's this is this is strange, very strange. We, we might want to report this and see if anybody has that amulet over on their side. Well, I haven't shown it to anybody but Lord Idris. Okay. Uh, and I basically kept it hidden from everyone else's view. Uh, once I learned what it was and did, or what it what it could do. Uh, so I will return to Lord Idris, let him know that it seems to have scar- scarpered off, and he maybe want to be on the lookout for it. It bravely ran away. Yeah. <laughs> bravely ran away. Oh, no. Ran away. Ran away. Mm-hmm. When, when um, the cursing reared its ugly head, it bravely turned its tail and fled. <laughs> it's not on Ari's person, so he's rejoicing. <laughs> I privately. love that so much. <laughs> privately and inwardly, but yeah, there is a... He is rejoicing. Okay. <laughs> so um, your Fitbit chimes because you've gotten your steps in for the day. There you go. Because you keep going back and forth between the inn and the castle. <laughs> Again, hopefully not inter... Well, I'm interrupting, I'm certain. Um, and to explain to Lord Idris, the amulet seems to have taken a powder. Um, he may want to be on the lookout for it. I don't know if he wants to alert the populace at all. Uh, I, you know, that's on him. As far as I'm concerned, it's... I think there's something definitely evil about it. And it's probably going to be either a pain in our rump or yours. And I hope it's not yours. Thank you for the information. I have a feeling that it's going to be more your problem than mine. But I still suspect it's going to be both of our issues. I sort of agree. All right. Um, Unless, again, unless he has anything... All right, we'll head back to the inn. And at this point, I think he's ready to discuss when does the group want to leave. Um, Unless anybody has any objections to going anywhere else, we will see if we can go towards Adralanka uh, and whatever nexus point or focal point is closest to that that city. Based on the map that Fiddlepunch was showing you, the next closest place is... Um, now, both of these locations, Adrilanka and the next thing, whatever it is, right. are to the west, but one of them is to the southwest on the other side of a mountain range, and the other one is to the northwest, and that's Adrilanka, because Adrilanka is on the inner coast of Circular. Yes, yeah, he, but he was on the southern portion of the continent. Yes. You'd, okay. Um, you'd be going in that general direction it, um, along the long road. Right. Um, but they are not something where you go to one and on the way there you go to the other. Right. It'd be like deciding to go to Ohio but taking a pit stop in Texas when your starting point was Pennsylvania. Yeah. That sounds like what American Airlines always suggests to me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, true. I was going right. to say something else, but no, you're right. All right, let's let's let's. Uh, is that something you want to go to, Matt? We just. Oh, I'm sorry, um, Ari. We just want to head over to there to to the area next uh, the point focal point next to you, and then we can start from there. Yeah, there is no focal point next to him. No, you know, that's that's the problem. You, you yeah, know, there's two... nothing near Adralanka as the issue. That's what I was hoping there would be yeah. one, but there isn't one. These okay, are two well, mutually exclusive destinations. Yeah. Um, I know which one Vex wants. He he wants to, to go home. So he's not that interested in going to Adralanka. He, he doesn't want to take a side trip to go to a city. Yeah. Ari needs to go home. Um He's not anxious to go home, but he has a mission to accomplish. Uh, so he he would push for Adralanka unless 
you know, because what he needs to do there won't take long, and then we can pursue the, the focal points. Unless someone pushes really for the focal points, like he, you guys really want to go home, great. Then he'll postpone his trip to go on the focal points because if that gets you guys home, that's fine with him. He's, you know, it's what you want. His mission can wait a little bit. It's a business deal that will make money for his family, but he's not all not, not all that anxious to help out his family. He he's willing there, to wait on it. Is there an underworld in uh, Adrilanka? Oh yeah, lots of them. Ooh, but then, he would, that, that, he well, then Punk wants to go. Well, Punk yeah. wants to go there then. Well, but my, my understanding is Andrelanka is sort of like, let's say you've had a stew on the burner for a long period of time and has a very thin skin on top. Mm-hmm. That skin is what a casual visitor to Andrelanka will see, and everything else is the underworld. Yes. Uh, it is it is a very naughty city. Punk, <laughs> Punk, Punk is like, my friend, I'll escort you. <laughs> And I'm not staying there very long. You may oh, I won't never leave. leave. <laughs> I won't need long. <laughs> I'm sure. Uh, but like I said, that aside, if Obame and Vex want to get their going home trip started quicker, Ari's more than willing to say, okay, well, Adrilanka can wait. Let's go find the, the focal points first. Well, Obame is, is going to be the supporting class. That's the, he, he wants to make sure everybody else has their things first before he gets his. So uh, if we want to start where start where Vex wants to go, um, that might be something we want to do. Okay. Ari's okay with that, but before we return to Coomridge, he would have to stop at Adrilanka. So whether okay. we do it first or last doesn't matter to him, but it has to be somewhere during the journey before if we ever make it back here to Coomridge. That's fine, but we got to make sure everybody else is on the same page. Exactly, and Ari's okay with if we can all agree on a route. Let's, you know, he's fine with that. You know, he's not going to be like, no, I got to do mine first. Uh, that's not his style. Okay. Uh, so if Vex is the only, if Vex is pushing for that direction to go home, then Ari will relent and say, okay, let's do that first. If he takes you guys home, great. Punk might want to stay to come with me to Sri Lanka. That's wonderful. Uh, Meepo will probably stay, uh, mm-hmm. but Ari will not stay in Adrilanka very long because he'll want to get word back to Lord Idris that, yep, letters delivered, everything's going to start rolling here in the next couple of weeks, months, years, whatever. So that means, guess. is is Punk going to go along with what we're doing? Yeah. Punk? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> very good. <laughs> All right. So so I vote that we go ahead and go to the focus, focus point that's more toward Vex. Okay. Or- Towards Vex's interest. Okay, I'll Correct. go with that. All right. Can I? I, I want to make a quick trip over to see the Gooch before we. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> okay, we've got we've got time. We're gonna have to collect like food and mouths, okay. etc. I, hey, I'm boss, going to. Ins- I'm going to instruct her that she needs to recruit uh, two more uh, team members, uh, and uh, by, by the time I get back. Can do. All right. Very good. I don't know if I should be endorsing a crime syndicate run by a second. <laughs> that's a third grader. <laughs> Actually, I teach third grade. Yeah, I can see this happening. <laughs> exactly. She needs purpose. Yes. I don't know, uh, Logan. You see, you can see kids in your and under when you were in fifth and sixth grade forming crime syndicates. Correct. I can see people even lower. Than that. <laughs> <laughs> You're both- you, you have to give children focus and, and teach them skills. Well, remember, she's the ringleader. Not the ringleader, yeah. but she, she's the second in command. Yeah. Um, th- there's a, two more members. One of them is a cat, but the other one is like in first grade. Okay, that's fine. He spends I half of his time with his from, finger up his nose. I assure you from my experiences in teaching that a crime syndicate can happen as low as first grade, believe me. I, was, I, 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 I don't understand it, it, what the crime is. No, they, they do. <laughs> that uh, group did. They, they might. If, uh, in some cases, the crime was they got a cookie out of the cookie jar before dinner. Okay. <laughs> if if there was enough time, I was going to see if we could organize a uh, fight club as well. But uh... oh no, <laughs> that's horrible. You are bad, and you should feel bad. But you are punk, and you're chaotic neutral, so you don't. I really don't care. <laughs> 
as far as time sake is concerned, it is nine thirty. How do we want to continue this? Oh, I, yeah. I was thinking that we were going to wrap it up here, and then yeah. when we continue, we talk about your journey there. Because if you're all Very deciding, good. it sounds like you're all deciding you're going to take fiddle punches. Yeah. Um, offer. Mm-hmm. Correct. So that journey is going to be near instantaneous. Very good. Very good. Okay. Yeah. And that's where we'll take up next week. All right. Great RP, right. guys. That was fun. Thank you, everyone. You are listening to Words of Jen, where I read to you one piece of my writing in each and every episode. Book of Jen dot net.